Hey, Firebrand X here with a uh, OSSC tutorial on uh, the Super Nintendo, which uh, this is the NTSC version. This is my one chip 03, and uh, the typical video game resolution for it is 256 by 224. Uh, it technically outputs 240, but the top uh, eight pixels are black and the top bottom pixels are black so it kind of plays in a letterbox fashion in that regard um, so we want to leave those intact to sort of make it conform to a 1280 by 960 for this line 4x mode that I'm using and right now I've got it in generic but I'm going to show you how to set it to optimal timing so going to the OSSC menu the first thing here video in processing you want to leave it at uh, either auto or 9 megahertz. Uh, that's, that's the best mode for um, 240p consoles. So we'll back out of that and we'll go down to output options. And you can see I have 240p set to line 4x. Of course, if your TV can do line 5x, you can just change it to that. Uh, everything else should still apply from this video in terms of optimal timings. But we're going to go down to line 4x modes choices here, and you see it's set to generic 4.3. We're going to change that. Uh, there's 320 by 240, but we want 256 by 240 optimal. That's what we want there. Now the next thing is if we go further down the menu, we can see for 256 by 240 aspect, that's the aspect ratio, you can set it to 4.3 or 8 by 7. Now 8x7 will actually send the pixels in a perfect integer scale on both axes. Like uh, uh, in line 4x mode, the pixels will be 4 pixels tall and 4 pixels wide. But if you set this to 4.3 mode, it will actually make the pixels 4 pixels tall by 5 pixels wide. And uh, it just makes for a sharp, perfect fit in a 1280 by 960 window um, and but you can see here that it's it doesn't look quite right the pixels are flickering and it's shifted to the left and I'm going to show you how to fix all that I've kind of scrambled it a little bit just to show you how to dial everything in so I'm going to go ahead and go into the checkerboard pattern here and you can see the H sample rate is causing that disturbance because it's not perfectly set. By default, it's perfectly set, I believe, at 341. But we're going to go ahead and back out of this menu here and go up to uh, sampling options. And then we'll push up once to go to advanced timing for 256 by 240. And we'll go in there and we'll see the H sample rate. I've lowered it to 337 just to show that it's off. And you can see in the checkerboard pattern the disturbance. So let's raise it to say 340. And you see it's very close there. And 341, and that looks pretty much perfect uh, for the uh, sample rate, except that it's shifted to the left. And there's two ways to fix this uh, H sync length or H back porch. I prefer to use back porch. Let's lower it one, and now it's perfectly centered that way. And it looks like vertically it's a little low on my window preview here. So we can go to uh, V back porch and change that. And that made it even lower. So let's go up to and maybe another one. That looks pretty good. I don't know. Well, yeah, we'll leave it right there. Uh, see how that looks. That looks pretty well centered. Go ahead and back out. And... Uh, to the menu sampling options. I forget how to, that's, that's right, I gotta scroll back down to it. Sampling phase. 180 degrees by default looks pretty good. I could probably increase it a couple of notches just to make sure there's no flickering. So 202 degrees looks really good there. We'll back out and we've got a really good picture here. Now I typically recommend this 4x3 aspect ratio mode for line 4x or 5x because the uh, 8 by 7 mode in the OSSC is not quite centered. It's got the left side pinched off on the pixels on the left side, like the very last edge of the left pixels is cut off by one line in 4x mode. So I don't typically like to use 8 by 7. And I'll demonstrate what that looks like real quick. Let's go to a test pattern so you can see that. 
and 256 by 224. And then I'm going to go on the menu here down to output options and we'll go back to that uh, optimal timing mode for 256. And we'll change it to 8 by 7 and in here it may be hard to tell in the video but the left side edge there that red line of graphics on the very left side is only three pixels wide while the right side is four pixels wide and this is the fault of the OSSC it's some sort of weird quirk with it where the alignment for this 8x7 mode is off by one pixel and if you try to correct it by say setting the uh, H active to 257 pixels um, what's that, what that's going to do is increase the width of the signal from 1280 to say like 1286. And sometimes it will randomly change it to 1284. And in terms of reliability, that's not good. We don't want it randomly changing. So uh, I don't recommend changing the active area to 257 to compensate for this misalignment issue. So because of that, I recommend sticking with uh, 4x3 mode because no pixels are cut off. It perfectly fits the 1280 by 960 window. However, there is also uh, the Super Game Boy, and on the Super Game Boy, you can use that 8x7 mode to uh, show square pixels and have the pixels of the active Super Game Boy area look just like the original handheld's aspect ratio. And because you can turn the borders of the Super Game Boy to black, uh, that slightly off-centering issue on 8x7 uh, is avoided and you don't have to worry about it. And I'll demonstrate that. But before I do, let's go ahead and test a game on this. Let me reset back to the SD2 SNES menu. Which, by the way, this menu is actually uh, driven in 512 by 224 so you'll notice there's a little bit of flickering on the pixels and the font isn't quite clear and like I said that's because it's actually running at 512 by 224 and I didn't even realize this until I start, got the OSSC and started playing around with optimal timing so just so everyone knows what's going on with that that's just because of the uh, weird resolution the SD2 SNES menu runs at so let's see here let's like run F0 for example You can see here the pixels are perfect. We'll go ahead and play like a lap. And then I'll load up the uh, Super Game Boy to demonstrate where 8x7 can be uh, advantageous for it. down there uh, off the ramp. A lot of people forget to do that. Alright, that's a good demonstration of that. Let me go ahead and uh, power off the Super NES and load up the Super Game Boy 2 actually. Hopefully this will boot. There we go. Alright, so here we're going to go into the OSSC menu and output options and change the aspect ratio to 8 by 7. That gives us square pixels, which is going to be the same as the original handheld Game Boy's aspect ratio. And uh, then I'm going to go into the Super Game Boy menu and turn that border off. And now, as you can see here, we have the Super Game Boy uh, 2 running the game at the same pixel aspect ratio of the original handheld. So this is a really neat trick if you wanted to, uh, say, capture this footage and have it look like the original handheld's aspect ratio and not have to worry about that off-center timing that disturbs the left edge of the full Super Nintendo uh, image. Go ahead and just start a game here.
and yeah, it looks pretty good. Alright, that should about wrap it up. Um, I will be doing more in-depth videos for each of the consoles. Uh, just wanted to start with this one and test out this new setup where I've got the inset window of the OSSC just to make it easier to show what I'm doing. And uh, thanks so much for watching.